Welcome back to Project 613. Today we will learn six mitzvot. The first is to count the years, to count the sabbatical years and the jubilee year. You see, we learned about the seven year agricultural cycle, six years of work in the seventh year of the, which is the sabbatical year, the Shemitah year. We now have something else called the jubilee year. And that is after seven cycles of the sabbatical year. So seven times seven, we have 49 years. And after that, we have the 50th year known as the Jubilee year. And the first mitzvah we learn today is the mitzvah to count these years. Besafarta lacha sheva shabtot shanim. The Torah says you should count for yourself seven periods of seven years. Now this mitzvah is given to the Sanhedrin, to the Jewish Supreme Courts, to verbally count each year, at the beginning of each year, which number we are in the Shemitah, in the cycle of the sabbatical year and which number we are in the jubilee in the cycle of the 50 years this is similar in a way to sefirat omer the mitzvah we have of counting the omer between pesach and shavuot except that the mitzvah of counting the omer is given to every single individual we all make a blessing and count the omer every single evening between pesach and shavuot whereas when it comes to this mitzvah of counting the years this was given specifically to the jewish court and not to each individual the second mitzvah that we have today is about the Jubilee year. It is a positive mitzvah that the year shall be sanctified. The Torah says, You shall sanctify the 50th year. And this means that just like the Shemitah year, just like the sabbatical year, the land is given a rest and the land is not worked. So too, sanctifying the 50th year means that we have to allow the land to rest and we have to make all produce ownerless, just like we've done in the Shemitah year, just like we've done in the sabbatical year. Now, here is the difference between the Jubilee year and the sabbatical year, that whereas the Shemitah year applies until this very day in the land of Israel, when it comes to the Jubilee year, although this also only applies in the land of Israel, however, this only applies at a time when all the tribes were living in the designated portions of land that were given to them in the Torah. But once the Jews were exiled from their designated portions, the Jubilee year and all of its laws no longer apply. We also have three prohibitions about the Jubilee year, again, similar to those that we had about the Shemitah year, about the sabbatical year. Number one, we have a pro prohibition, Lot Yisra'u, not to do any work on the fields or on the trees, no agricultural work to be done on the land during this year. Then we have the mitzvah of not harvesting the wild growing crops. And then we have another prohibition of not harvesting the wild growing grapes or any other fruits, just as we had when it came to the sabbatical year. Finally, the sixth mitzvah that we learned today is a unique mitzvah for the Jubilee year. And that is to sound the shofar. The Torah tells us that on the Yom Kippur, on the Yom Kippur of the Jubilee year, the shofar should be sounded. Vahavartem shofar trua beasar lachodesh. You shall you shall sound the shofar on the tenth day of the month of Tishrei. Ukratem deror baretz. You shall proclaim freedom in the land. The idea of blowing the shofar on the jubilee year was to indicate that all Jewish slaves could go free. We will learn in a few months' time different scenarios when there could be a Jewish slave. But either way, when it comes to the jubilee year. This would be the end of the term for the Jewish slaves. They would all be set free. And the blowing of the shofar was that indication. This would be done on the Yom Kippur of the Jubilee year. Interestingly, in today's day and age, we have a custom to blow the shofar every year on Yom Kippur. And it's actually one of the reasons it is symbolic of this mitzvah, where the shofar was blown to symbolize the freedom and emancipation of the slaves. So too, every year on Yom Kippur, we blow the shofar to symbolize our own emancipation from our inner negativity and our evil inclination, which we hopefully experience on Yom Kippur and wish to take forward for the rest of the year. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.